So I happened to be at Universal Studios in Orlando, and I happened to find myself a butterbeer. Now the question is, is it possible to make this at home? Uh, let's find out. I think I might be able to do it. Let's try. Take it away, future Logan. Okay, my goal is to reverse engineer this butterbeer and see if I can make it at home. Now, while watching them make it, it's apparent there's two separate parts. There's a soda part, and then there's this marshmallow topping part. Now the marshmallow topping part has a butterscotch flavor and honestly it's where most of the kind of butterbeer flavor comes from. Okay, so first let's start by making some cream soda. Now this is definitely something I've made a few times on the channel, most recently when I made vanilla from scratch, but it's pretty easy so let's just make it again. First I'm just going to heat up some water and add in two cups of sugar. Also I'm going to add in some cream of tartar which is going to help kind of stabilize the syrup. I'm just going to heat this water up until all the sugar gets dissolved and then it's just a matter of adding in some vanilla flavoring. And in my case, I'm just gonna use some store-bought vanilla extract. Now, quick note about vanilla. This is definitely one of those scenarios where I recommend using a higher quality vanilla. Because this is the base of the soda and really almost all the flavors coming from this, it really does help if you have something that tastes a little bit better to begin with. Now you could, if you're going the extra mile, make the vanilla yourself, but that's a lot of work and I don't recommend that. Okay, now let's go back to the soda. Okay, so once the sugar is dissolved and all the stuff is basically mixed together, I just decided to cool the syrup down and it's time to move on to the next part. Okay, so now that I had the soda base done, it's time to move on to the actual marshmallow topping. Now, in the version that I had at Universal, this is where most of the flavor was coming from. And so for that, I need to actually make the flavoring that's gonna flavor the butterscotch topping. And so I decided to just make a simple butterscotch, which sounds really difficult, but honestly, it wasn't too bad to make. So let's go ahead and make it. Now, butterscotch sounds a lot harder to make than it actually is. All I need to do is basically heat up some brown sugar, add a little bit of water, and then just, I kept heating it up until it got bubbles like this. At which point, it's just a matter of adding in some butter and just letting that kind of melt into the kind of hot caramel that I made. And then lastly, I just added a little bit of some heavy cream to kind of just mellow out that flavor even further. So once the butter's melted and we've heated up the cream, I just let it cook for a little bit longer. And I don't even know if that was necessary, but I did it anyways. But once I let this cook for, I don't know, about 30 seconds, I pull it off the heat and then I'm just set this off to the side for it to cool down. And once it cools down, it's gonna solidify. And as I said earlier, this is really gonna be the flavoring for our butterscotch topping. Okay, so now I have the cream soda base. I've got the butterscotch flavoring for the topping. I just need to actually make the part that's gonna be the fluffy part on top. And so to do this, I'm gonna make what's known as a meringue. Essentially, this is kind of like a very viscous marshmallow. And to do this, it's really just made with egg whites and then we're gonna add a candy syrup to that. And that's just basically gonna make this fluffy, drooly liquid marshmallow. And it's pretty fun to watch. Okay, so to make the marshmallow topping, I decided to make a marshmallow recipe that starts with some eggs. So I just separated some egg whites from some egg yolks and the egg yolks I'm gonna set off to the side and we're really just gonna focus on the egg yolks here. I also decided to add some sugars to a pot, which I'm gonna heat up in a minute, but it's a good idea to get it started. I'm just gonna add a little bit of granulated sugar and some corn syrup, which is gonna help prevent it from crystallizing. Going back to our egg whites, I added in a little bit of the cream of tartar, which is gonna help stabilize this egg foam I'm about to make. I decided to just basically whip this up until I got a nice frothy egg foam. And essentially this is gonna be the base of the marshmallow. I'm gonna set that off to the side and in the meantime, I'm gonna start heating up the sugar. Now once the sugar reaches the softball stage of candy making, I'm actually ready to mix the two of these together. And essentially the sugar is going to mix with this egg foam and this is gonna create a marshmallow. Now the trick to this is you don't really wanna just dump in the sugar syrup. If you do that, you're gonna end up with a hot mess. Actually, in a previous video while trying to make some cool marshmallows, I actually did do this where I just dumped in the sugar syrup in before the egg whites and it turned into a total mess. And as you can see here, this thing's just whipping around. It's never gonna whip up and basically you just have to start over. I ended up actually abandoning that video because it just was such a setback. So definitely recommend adding in that sugar syrup slowly so you don't repeat the same mistakes that I have. So the tactic here is to really just slowly add in a little bit of syrup while continuing to mix with one hand. But I just kept slowly adding the sugar syrup into the, the egg foam and eventually I ended up with this beautiful warm marshmallow fluff. Now, let me tell you, this stuff is absolutely delicious. This is like one of those rare treats in life that tastes like nothing else they've had before. Everybody loves marshmallow, but hot marshmallow fluff, that's that's a real special treat. You'll know that it's done because the marshmallow will kind of stick on itself. So as I pull one of these little ribbons up, it will kind of slowly take a second to dissolve back down. 
So now that I have this marshmallow fluff, it's just a matter of flavoring it with our butterscotch flavoring. So I just pulled off the butterscotch flavoring and I'm just gonna add it to taste. The idea here is just to add a little bit and just mix it in, it, it, just keep mixing it until it tastes like the butterbeer marshmallow fluff. So to make this, all I did was to take the cream soda base that I made earlier and just add a little bit of the syrup to a glass, then just add in some soda water to make a cream soda and then just slowly top it with this marshmallow foam that, that I just made. And that's basically it. So now the main question is, how does it taste? Okay, so before we actually do, we do a taste test, I want to first compare what it was like for me to actually have it at Universal Studios to begin with. So let's roll that. Now the question is, how does this one taste? That's oh, really sweet. It's really sweet. Okay, so now let's find out what this tastes like after I made it. All right, so now how did it end up tasting? Well, I'm not gonna lie, I've already had a bunch of this, but I'll do it for you guys again. Mmm. It's messy as all get out, but it's delicious. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. And if you're wondering why this video is so segmented with clips from me at three different times, it's because my videos have been taking a lot longer to actually make. I just kept working on it and I don't know, this is the video that I end up with. So things like that can happen and basically it means that the video is going to take a little bit longer. But another reason why I've been taking a long time to actually create new Flavor Lab content is that I've been working on a book. And so this is the first announcement of basically the fact that the book is coming out. I will have a lot more information about it coming out soon, but in case you're interested, I'm going to be putting a, the pre-order link down in the description. Um, I'm going to be talking about the book a lot more soon. So. But I just wanted to, for people who really love the work and basically watch the videos that are like this one, which I assume is going to get less traction than normal and also make it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you. It's really people like you who support the channel. It really means a lot to me. So um, I hope to have another video out soon. I just finished a kind of really cool project where I've been making something that has nothing to do with food. Uh, but I'll be also getting back to some more food related videos soon including some cool soda recipes um, and some other stuff. So thank you again for being such a great supporter. And this is, you, you're the reason why I do this. So, all right, that's it for this week. Um, I hope to see you guys again soon. Uh, yeah, all right, bye.